Hi again, YouTube. It's that one guy in lit class, here today to finish talking about Middle English pronunciation by throwing some knowledge your way about some special characters, pun intended, in Middle English. Okay, so, brief overview of what we're going to be covering. We're going to be examining five things today. The eth, the thorn, the yog, the ash, and the win. Yes, Middle English had a letter called win. We'll get to it shortly. Okay, starting off with the F. Quick note, the symbols you see on the slide are the lowercase and uppercase versions of the letter F. I will give both the lower and uppercase versions of all the letters we talk about in this video, and they will always appear lowercase followed by uppercase. So the F was a way of saying the phenome, that is, sound unit, TH, before the letters TH became popular. The F can represent both the voiced and unvoiced fricative form of TH. If you need a refresher on fricatives, see the last video. The eth can still be found in the modern Icelandic language. In Middle English, though, the eth had mostly fallen out of use by the end of the 13th century. What replaced it? Well, the thorn replaced it. The thorn, like the eth, makes the phenome for th, and again, like the eth, can be both voiced and unvoiced. The thorn also survives in modern Icelandic. For a time, the thorn and eth were used interchangeably, but eventually the eth fell out of favor, presumably due to the redundancy of having two letters that do the exact same things. The thorn does, though, have one claim to infamy that the eth doesn't, and it is the subject of this video's rant. You've probably seen it above any number of supposedly old-timey shops. It has a rustic feel, ye old bookshop, or whatever. You see, in Middle England and abroad, typing was pretty hard, and if you didn't have a certain letter, it was easier to just substitute another letter for it than try and make a letter to fit into whatever printing press you were using. Thus, it became the fashion to substitute Y for the thorn. So in Middle English, the word the was often spelled Y-E, but, and this is important, it was still pronounced the, or the, whatever, you get the point. Calling shops ye old shop is incorrect. It literally means you old shop, which just sounds like you're insulting some poor innocent shop. So next time you see a shop with the word Y-E in its name, when really they wanted to write thorn plus E, do me a favor and let the owner know. Only you can prevent language misuse. Moving on, back to the rest of the letters. The yog is generally used to make the G or J sound, but it can also make a CH or GH sound. The modern word lock is an example of a yog sound still in effect. Similar to the thorn turning into a Y in some texts, the yog transforms into a Z in some texts, again due to the influence of the printing press. Seriously, either printing presses were the hardest things ever to change, or the people that ran them were really lazy. The next letter, the ash, you've probably seen if you've ever looked at words of Latin at origin, which you have if you speak English. The ash is made up of the letters A and E, and as you might imagine, it is pronounced as a sort of combination of those letters. The standard comparison here is to the short A sound in the word cat, as spoken in modern English. The last letter we'll look at today is the win. This letter is of Germanic origin and is derived from the Anglo-Saxon rune for joy. It makes up the phenome W in many texts, before eventually being phased out for a literal W digraph, meaning two letters appearing together to make one sound. And the literal W, of course, eventually becomes the modern letter W. One final note before we go. With the exception of the ash, all of these letters had been more or less abandoned by the year 1700, if not earlier. So when reading later Middle English texts, it is entirely possible that you will not come across any of these characters, or maybe just one, but not the rest. This is normal, and again speaks to the fact that English at this time was not a unified language, but rather a hodgepodge language still very much in development. In the next video, we're going to take a look at Middle English vocabulary, I'm going to suggest some resources for you, and we'll read a poem. Hope you tune in!